Complete capitulation by the Indian team in the second innings as the Boxing Day test finishes inside three days. There's plenty to unpack there for on ESPN Cricket for Match Day with Sanjay Manjrekar. We're not used to see the, seeing this overseas with the kind of reputation the Indian team has uh, developed over the years, Sanjay. At 131 all out, is the story of a batting failure in the second innings or is this the story of a bowling attack that clearly, um, I can't understand how they let South Africa get 400 plus when conditions, when they batted, look completely different. And it was immediately after India finished, you know, with South Africa and they allowed South Africa to score 400. And minutes later, you had a Rabada making life difficult. Yes. And, you know, uh, Marco Janssen getting those wickets. Somewhere you saw the South African bowlers get more out of the pitch and there are technical reasons and uh, better sort of planning. But the bigger story is, yes, there was batting collapse, but 245 in the first innings in those conditions was a good batting effort. So you still maintain that first inning score was actually a good one? Yes, yes. considering you know the pitch. And also we somewhere deep down knew that there was Yashasvi Jaiswal, Shubman Gill, Shreya Sayar on their first trip to South Africa. Tough conditions. Shubman Gill has played in Australia and he will be the first one to say, boy, you know the ball does something out here. The bowling is the big uh, talking point as to how average it looked mm. considering that we had only Shami missing from that bowling lineup. Okay, we'll cover both aspects here on ESPN Rick for Match Day. So stay with us. We'll we'll take our time through this. Let's start with the points Sanjay Manjrekar raises regarding the bowling. Get into those technical aspects best you can as to why when Rabada and Andre Berger were bowling, we saw rockets and trampoline bounce and all sorts of problems for the Indian batters. And yet through prolonged spells of bowling, even to some degree by Jaspreet Bumrah, we just did not see the same kind of threat. Vernon Philander actually made a great point as he was talking to us, he casually remarked that if you want to make an impact with the bowling in South Africa on those pitches, you shouldn't be looking to swing the ball. And that is, you know, a very interesting statement. And somewhere you've got to say Bumrah as well. If you remember the first over that he bowled, he was trying big in swingers. Siraj as well swing, Shahrudul Thakur swing. And there were three men in the covers to the left-handed Dane Elgar and they were pitching the ball up trying to get him to sway, uh, you know, drive against the full length ball. And he drove a lot and lots of boundaries. And yeah, those yeah. were floaty kind of deliveries and India learned after that that mm, we are not getting too much help, let's shorten our length. But the fact is the, you know, horses had, horses had bolted, uh, enough runs were on the board. So by the time India realized the South African way of getting more out of the pitch, enough runs were already scored and South Africa came in and they bowled that length that you need in South Africa to get because it's a universal thing six seven mm -hmm. meter length India were floating balls in that length South Africans were hitting that length the same length six seven meters but there was more strength behind the ball and hence more help and more reaction from the surface so to just elaborate on that point for to and also to elaborate on Vernon Philander's point that you mentioned uh, India's bowlers do have the ability to extract that same zip, that same ball speed after the ball pitches, which troubled a number of India's batters. So, do they, do they lack the ability? Is it a question of height? As we try and understand why they were looking for swing and didn't have that impact of that length that you speak of? It was just planning. I think India thought that they would get the South African batters out in that fashion. In some way, they may have also underestimated the South African batting lineup because the way Bumrah started off, Siraj, Shardul, you thought you know they were going to pitch the ball up, get them to drive. India slip catching has been pretty good and South Africa would collapse because 245, they thought they had enough runs on the board. But the South African nature in that pitch started showing. Every time the ball was pitched up, it was getting driven and there were some easy runs given to the batter. So basically, uh, you saw Rabada get Rohit Sharma out. Mm. Now, you might think, you know, you got, got that ball to shape away beautifully, but that again was evidence of the fact that it was just the angle yes. and the movement that you get from the pitch. And can India do it? Yes, they can do it. Maybe not as well because, you know, height-wise, they are at a slight disadvantage. But mind you, second test match, you see them bowl a different length and you'll see a little more strength in the balls that they bowl in the full length area. There won't be too many floaty kind of deliveries and that's a lesson right. learned albeit at a great cost. Yeah, because in a two-test series, it's an unassailable lead and this was an opportunity for them to register something they haven't. Series win in South Africa, it's also part of the WTC cycle, so this loss will hurt. But just to carry on uh, the point on bowling uh, in this particular test match, I'm sure a number of Indian viewers will be thinking, 
is it, is, we have a really great fast bowling lineup. It's supposed to deliver in helpful conditions. Bumrah Siraj still look good in patches. Can it be expected only of the two of them? How much did they miss a Mohammad Shami? We had a high expectation from Prasid Krishna. Did he live up to them or is it too harsh to ask such questions of a debutant? India missed Shami because you're talking about getting most out of the pitch by hitting the pitch and not for uh, looking for movement in the air. And what does Shami do best? You know, yeah, getting, I mean, he gets movement of Indian pitches where there's hardly any. So he would have been a handful. But I guess the main lesson, main takeaway, apart from getting a few more runs on the board, yeah. is that you've got to bowl differently. And the Indian seamers, the quality bowler that we have, have realized that now. Yeah, it's, it's also interesting that sometimes little things play a factor. There was a lot of playing and missing in the opening spell from Siraj and Bumrah. Had they got two or three more at that time, who knows what the story was. But the follow-up bowling, which we tend to believe is also effective, or there is a rich reserve of Indian fast bowling. They've now moved beyond Umesh Yadav. And Shardul Thakur, I was seeing the breakup in the last two years of his numbers versus how he started for a spell where he was getting, uh, having a huge impact. Shardul Thakur and Prasid between them, the amount of boundaries they conceded. Do you sense there's a bit of a course correction coming with Shardul Thakur and that he's not quite the, you know, I think it's an overall question that are India's reserve bowling options or backup bowling options actually as deep as we think? Yes, I think there is. Uh, there are options. They stuck with Prasid Krishna. Uh, my playing 11 had Mukesh Kumar because yeah. only for that reason, because I've seen South Africa and I, I've said this even before the match that you get a lot of lateral movement. I never said that the ball's going to be swinging a lot in the air. You get movement of the pitch at any stage of the match in South Africa. Now, that is a phenomenon you don't see in Australia or in England. You see that happening in patches, but right through a match, never. That happens in South Africa, and that's why for India, it's still the final frontier. A lot of you know accomplished batters go to South Africa and struggle. So the right kind of bowlers that India have would still be able to contribute. I think there is enough there. Uh, it will be a little harsh to drop Prasid Krishna after one because if you look at him, he's not somebody who hits the deck hard. He sort of uses his height. Anything that is pitches up is a bit floaty. Mm. The only ball that has a bit of pace and strength are the short balls. Shardul Thakur plays because he can bat. And he plays especially in foreign conditions because India is always a little yeah. wary of their batting. And you saw why India is a little uh, you know, uncertain about they're batting and hence Shardul Thakur tends to make the playing 11. Yeah, I think fair enough. Uh, before we move to the batting, since we're just uh, on the bowling conversation, how about the use of their bowlers too? In Rohit Sharma's only overseas test as captain in, this, in a Sena country, barring uh, the World Test Championship final recently, uh, you made a point on what was a blunder after lunch yesterday where the deficit was still 196 and he started with Shardul and Prasid, not Bumrah. Uh, did he not have a great game as captain? No, I think there was a certain amount of underestimation of the South African batting after right. India got 245. But yes, Rohit Sharma, uh, it wasn't one of his best days or test matches as captain. Uh, that was a blunder. And in test matches, actually, uh, these are the moments that you've got to cash in. It's how Rabada, you know, in that second session, how he got South Africa back in the game with the way he bowled. So those are the moments. And uh, that was a huge mistake. Plus the bowling plans as well, not just the bowling changes. It, I was just amazed by what the Indian bowlers kept trying uh, almost throughout the test match. Hmm. You had an instance of, uh, you know, Marco Janssen getting the outside edge and the ball just falling short of KL Rahul. But after that, there were a couple of deliveries in that same region. And then there was the bouncer and then there was a full length delivery. There was something going down the leg side. So that was unexpected. And that is uh, somewhere where the captain could come in and say, guys, time running out, crucial now. Let's stick to discipline. And they conceded too many runs in the attempt to get wickets rather than stay the course. Stop the runs coming and the wickets will come along. The South African pitches will help you get wickets. You don't have to try too many things. Mm, right. It was quite an ordinary test for most of it because that South African innings, as good as Dean Elgar was, it never looked like India were testing him as much. Uh, but we'll come to that uh, a little later now as we look ahead to the next test. But before that, the batting. Uh, how critical can we be of the second innings effort? KL Rahul exceptional in the first innings. Virat Kohli exceptional in the second. Uh, can we be too critical about perhaps the selection of a Shreya Sayer, are we concerned about his ability in these conditions? Jaiswal and Gill still have early days, I don't know if you'd count Shreyas in them. How critical can you be of this Indian batting You effort? can't be. 
to critical because, and it's something we all talked about before the series began when we were looking at the first test match, what's going to be India's challenge. And we kept saying the three young batters that have come in the top six now. There's no Pujara, there's no Ajinkya Rahane. So Yashashwi Jaiswal had uh, the toughest test of his batting career. And in the future also, he won't get this kind of a test. He'll go to England, he'll go to Australia, but he'll find that, that things are a little more manageable there. So uh, he looked good in the first innings um, while he was there, but failures in both. The second innings, some of the shots that he played, I wonder whether that approach will actually work. Shubman Gill is getting, you know, uh, his defense is getting breached a bit too often happened in the World Cup Finals as well in a one-day match on an Indian pitch. So his defence needs to get a little more tight to the balls pitched up. Shreya Sayyar amongst the three has the most work to do mm. on his defensive technique. Because he doesn't just have one issue of defence. There are a few that he needs to correct. And one thing in test matches, you can't counter-attack and you know hit a few boundaries and put a bowler off. Because Certainly that bowler will... conditions. Yeah. yeah, because he doesn't have a limit on how many overs he can bowl. So. We take nothing away from South Africa though and this is a celebration for them not only for the purpose of the start of their WTC cycle but for almost a fairy tale farewell. I'm saying almost because Dean Elgar deserved 200. He's never had a test double ton, a uh, double hundred in test cricket. He's never had a hundred at his home ground. All that's been corrected now. Uh, fell short of the double hundred. Excellent innings though and you could almost hear from him in an emotionally meaningful one. And somebody who has been there, done that and faced tougher bowling attacks. He was playing at home and when the innings started off, there was plenty in the pitch. But this is what you get when you have old fundamentals. This is an old format and this is a guy who has grown up wanting to be a good test player. He doesn't play too much of T20 cricket. Mm. Uh, he's a bit like our Pujara, a you know, so pure species. test batter. Yeah. And if you ask him, I mean, he won't say it on his face, but he'll say the bowling was pretty manageable, barring yeah. Bumrah and Siraj. So, yes, and that he was relentless, just carried on. Batting was an effort to shut India out of the game. Plus the fact that this is his last uh, yeah. dance, as we've been saying. So, he's putting all his energy into every outing, and I think it's going to be trouble for India. We've already spoken about Rabada and yeah. how exceptional he's been in some of our previous shows. Uh, so, if I could just move on to the larger picture. You were still critical, as were a number of pundits, on South Africa letting India get too many. Even Sean Pollock said that. Marco Janssen seemed to have an indifferent game with ball, a very good one with bat. Gerald Kutsia as well. But Nandre Berger, it took two South African bowlers to seriously create inroads here. Nandre Berger on test debut? I actually, to be very honest, expected more. What we saw in the white ball format, you know, he looked like a guy, like a Brett Schultz. You know, he reminded me of a Brett Schultz that played on our first trip and it reminded a lot of South Africans as well and how he bowled in a test match was just brilliant. I mean this guy went in his first year to Sri Lanka and picked up five wickets. So Nandri Berger has the fundamentals. The thing to like about him is that uh, he's strong and tall and can hit the deck and the ball will carry to the keeper here but he also can bowl the ball up and get it to swing. Still a work in progress, so he's not an absolute finished article at the test level. And most young cricketers you'll find now in test cricket learning on the job because they're busy mostly playing the white ball format. But yes, somebody who's got hmm. uh, potential, but Rabada, just different sure. league. In. Uh, we have a test coming up uh, in Cape Town where India are yet to win, so it's hard for them in a two test series. Uh, do you expect Ravindra Jadeja to come in if fit? How much did India miss him? You would give Prasid another test from what you're saying, so Mukesh Kumar would have to wait his turn? I think Jadeja comes in straight away uh, for his bowling ability. Uh, Ashwin, I thought bowled well, but obviously, you know, didn't set the stage on fire. So Jadeja will come in. His batting is desperately needed. He's got an excellent batting record at the test level. Uh, you, if Mukesh Kumar plays, I don't think too many people will be unhappy. They'll be looking at how he's bowling in the nets and stuff and think whether it's uh, fair on Prasit Krishna because that is something India cares about a lot, the new team management about giving a uh, you know fair run. Yeah. The earlier team management would have been ruthless. Virat Kohli and Ravi Shastri were you know, sort of trigger happy with such things. 
these guys might give one more go. We'll have to wait and see. That's interesting. Just but as considering it's a two-match series, they might be keen to make changes. You have to pick yeah. up the series. Correct. So there is that aspect yeah. to consider as well. One change we know will happen for South Africa, just as you were giving us that answer, is that Emba Bavuma has been ruled out mm. of the newest test. So Dean Elgar will lead South Africa in his final test. It's been, uh, it's, it's a heartwarming yeah. story for a guy who usually flies under the radar in international cricket, isn't it? And see, captain, and when we heard him speak after the match, you could see that he was emotional. These are guys who have found success the hard way. Mm. These are guys who play only test cricket. I mean, if you talk to Pujara as well, off the yes, field, when you had a chance, these are enduring people, you know. So these are guys uh, who are sort of almost war-torn, you mm. know, the defensive players who've taken the toughest challenges and found success and who actually worship test cricket because they know that it is the ultimate test. And we saw it today with a lot of white ball sensation that India had, how they fared at the test level. So, captaining in the last test is just perfect. All right, Sanjay Manjwekar, that is a wrap for you from 2023 on our coverage on ESPN Quick Info and an exhaustive review and analysis. I expect nothing less. So, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. And we will have Sanjay with us for that New Year's test too. So, look forward to your company then on ESPN Quick Info Match Day.